Here we have the Rubicon 2, a versatile and powerful analog beast with nine simultaneously available waveforms. It's capable of exponential FM, linear through zero FM, hard and soft sync, wave warping, and squishing. Now that might sound like a bunch of intimidating jargon, so in this video we're going to start to explore what all that means, but more importantly we're going to show you how they can make the Rubicon do stuff like this. And this. And this. And this. And this. And this. And this. To understand the Rubicon, it helps to break the panel into sections. First, here at the bottom, you have a row of nine control inputs and nine waveform outputs. The waveforms include sine, triangle, saw, double saw, zigzag, pulse, tri-state pulse, sub, and warp. You have the usual pitch controls where you can set Rubicon's octave, fine tuning, and whether it functions as an audio rate VCO or as an LFO. Here there's also a pair of LEDs that display Rubicon's rate and polarity, along with a tuning offset trimmer which allows you to set the bass frequency. Next you have three wave type switches. The left one chooses between three sine wave options. Regular, sigmoid, and double sigmoid. The middle switch sets the octave of the sub oscillator, and the one on the right determines whether the pulse and tri-state pulse waves are center triggered, edge triggered, or edge triggered at double the frequency. The different pulse triggering methods allow for some interesting variation, especially when you're using the pulse waves to blend or sync with other waveforms. The FM index section is made up of an index knob and its respective CV attenuator to control the depth of FM applied at the TZFM input, or in Canada and the UK, TZFM. The index is essentially a VCA inserted between the TZFM jack and the Rubicon's TZFM circuit. By controlling the level of this VCA, also known as the index, you are able to dynamically change the depth of the frequency modulation. A popular use for this control is to apply an audio rate modulation to the TZFM input and then control the index with an envelope in order to get classic analog metallic bell tones. The symmetry controls also relate to Rubicon's through zero FM. Basically, the symmetry knob determines the balance of through zero FM if the symmetry lock is not engaged. It also sets the base frequency of the oscillator with zero hertz at dead center so you'll notice I get some dramatic pitch changes by adjusting the symmetry knob. At this point you might be asking what through zero FM means. Think of it this way. Let's say you have an oscillator droning away at 440 hertz and you apply some frequency modulation from an LFO. This causes the oscillator to increase in pitch when the modulation is positive and decrease when it's negative. If you apply enough negative modulation, the oscillator will eventually dip below 20 Hz and become inaudible, and then completely stop cycling at 0 Hz. With most oscillators, if they receive any additional FM beyond this, they stick at 0 Hz. But with TZFM capable oscillators like Rubicon, they pass through 0 to enter negative frequency ranges, meaning the VCO waveform will reverse its direction. So, for example, a saw wave would turn into a ramp wave, and vice versa. When you modulate slowly, and symmetry is close to zero, or locked, then it almost sounds like you're scratching a record back and forth. At high frequency rates, you will start to hear many added harmonics, also known as sidebands. If you have symmetry set either fully clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll get standard linear FM, because the modulation will not pass through zero hertz. If you have it at 12 o'clock, you'll get symmetrical through zero FM, meaning the frequency modulation is equally positive and negative, or reversed in direction. At any other position, you'll get asymmetrical through zero FM. If we flick up the lock switch, Rubicon automatically centers the symmetry and corrects its pitch, giving you stable pitch tracking and symmetrical through zero FM. For example, here's regular linear FM, and here's symmetrical through zero FM. Linear through zero. 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 Don't worry if you don't totally grasp TZFM. 
you can at least hear the dramatic difference between the settings and have some fun experimenting. The bottom line is that locking symmetry will produce more accurate pitch tracking. Without locking symmetry, any adjustments made to this control will mean that you will have to retune Rubicon, and it may not track properly in all octave ranges. Just note that the lock switch disables the symmetry knob, but not the symmetry CV input. Next up, we have a couple miscellaneous controls that include an exponential FM attenuverter and a switch to determine the behavior of the sync input. Exponential frequency modulation is a more common and familiar type of FM used by classic analog synths of the 1970s. Linear FM became more popular in the 80s, especially in digital synths like the Yamaha DX7. Having an attenuverter to control the CV input is useful if you want to invert a unipolar signal like an envelope. The sync input is activated whenever an incoming signal crosses zero. It's able to be toggled between hard, which restarts the phase of the oscillator, and flip, which is a form of soft sync that changes the direction of the oscillator. More complex waveforms can be achieved by feeding an oscillator with a higher pitch into Rubicon's sync input because this means that the waveform will restart or flip before completing its cycle. The pulse width controls are another familiar oscillator feature, but in this case, pulse width is able to extend all the way from 0% to 100%. At these two extremes, the pulse width completely opens or closes to the point where it becomes a unipolar DC signal and is therefore inaudible. This opens up the possibility of using pulse width control to mute the output and rhythmically gate the signal, along with other unique sound design options. Pulse width modulation controls both the standard pulse wave output as well as the tri-state pulse. And last but definitely not least, we have the warp controls. This knob controls how much the X input is warped by the tri-state pulse. By default, the sub-oscillator is normal to the X input, but you can get some really cool results by patching other Rubicon waveforms into the X input, or even using waveforms from external sources. Naturally, warp can be modulated by CV, and it has an attenuator to control the modulation depth. Since the warp function is dependent on the tri-state pulse wave, modulating the pulse width and changing the triggering will have a huge impact on the resultant sound. Sometimes warping can produce a really hot signal due to constructive interference of waveforms. So Rubicon has a squish switch to effectively limit the signal level to a nominal VCO range of 10 volts peak to peak. Squish is also a type of wave folder, and it can help you create some more interesting timbres. The back of the module has a trimmer for the squish circuit, so you can choose whether you want it to be more smooth or aggressive or somewhere in between. So that's just a brief introduction to Rubicon 2 and its features. Obviously there's a lot going on here, and we covered some pretty technical ground pretty fast. So feel free to ask questions in the comments below, or let us know what you would like to see demonstrated in greater detail. Also remember that Rubicon is not a set it and forget it oscillator. On the contrary, it rewards tweaking, modulating, and exploration. Because hey, these aren't your daddy's waveforms. Thanks for watching. Thank you.